Next we're going to talk about the mail and calendar apps. These are really improved over the Windows 8 version. Uh, if we click the start button here and you'll see them if you're still using the default start menu then you'll just see them in here. Of course if you move them around then you can go and get to them over in the all apps. So let's first let's go into mail. Now the mail app has really improved greatly in that it's a lot easier to use. You can bring in all your accounts easily and it just generally works better. Okay, so you have your initial setup here, so get started. Okay, so you have your Outlook right away, and then you can add other accounts. So let's go add account. And then you can bring in different kinds of accounts. So you can bring in an Exchange account, a Google account, a Yahoo account, an iCloud account, or other POP or IMAP accounts. So virtually you can bring in any kind of account into here and it'll look after all your email needs for you. So for instance, if you have a Yahoo Mail and a, G and a Gmail account, you can bring both of those in and see all your mail from here. Okay, I'm not going to bother setting one up, but it's as simple as adding an account, picking a type, and then signing in. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so it's a really good interface. If you click over here on the tab, and that just reduces things down or expands them back out. So here's our inbox, sent items, drafts. Click here for a new mail, and you can compose a new mail. So you see your mail on the left-hand side here, and then the preview of the mail over on the right-hand side. And then your controls are up over here. Okay, so it is a really good working app. It works just great compared to the old one. Okay, and you can use this to look after all of your mail right from within Windows here without having to download any kind of client or go into the web interfaces of those emails. Now the calendar app, again we'll go into the start menu here and just click on calendar. This allows you to manage your built-in calendar for Windows but also your other calendars, like for instance, if you have a Google calendar, you can bring that in as well. So click get started. And then again, you have your Outlook calendar, which will sync with anything you put in here or in any other device where you're using the calendar app for Windows. So now we can bring in, again, another Outlook account, Exchange, Google, or iCloud, or Advanced Setup. Okay, so then you can bring in different kinds of uh, things for POP or IMAP. Okay, so we can just go here. And then you can just manage your calendar from within here. And again, this is all of your different calendars. So it'll bring in anything that is from any calendar onto here. Okay, then you can add your events and then the, the view you want to have up here. Okay, so it's a very simple to use, yet it's very powerful. So Windows has done a great job on their core apps. The next thing I want to talk about is the Xbox app. So let's go in here and click on Xbox. Okay, so now it's connecting up. Okay, then you set up your game, game tag or sign in with a different account down here. Okay, and then we have our privacy settings. Let's just go to Let's Go here. Okay, and then in here you can add some friends into here if you want. Then you have your different features down the side. So this is our game tag here, our home, which is what we are, where we're at now, our activity feed. We click this up here. We can see an expanded view of what we're doing here. So your games. So these are the games that came pre-installed on here. So, you know, we can go in and play the 
Microsoft Solitaire collection here if we want. Click play there. Okay, so it'll bring up the Solitaire collection here. Okay, the first time in, it's if we'll let it access our info. Okay, so you pick which game you want to play here. It'll give you some instructions. All right, so now if you're at work and you need to hide this from your boss, go over here to virtual desktop. Click plus. And then load your work up on this screen. Okay, there you go. So we're back on our work screen. Okay, the boss is gone. Let's get back to our real work. Back to our virtual desktops. And back to the important stuff. Okay, so you can, of course, play games with that. But another neat thing you can do is record stuff. Now, let's, you can only do this with apps, and I won't do it with system-level things. But it, it is a kind of a cool feature. It's really meant for games. But you can lie and do it for anything. But I'm just going to do it for games here. So if you hit the Windows key and then the letter G, It'll get the game bar. Okay, now usually it'll come up and, and say, ask you if it's a game, but I've already loaded it here. Now, if you click here, you can start recording. Okay, and then it'll record what you're doing here. Now, let's stop. Let's go in. Now, you'll see here, this is setting. So you can go into here, and then you can set the, if you want it to record in the background, so it's not sitting there over top of your stuff. Now, I am showing you a game here, but this can be over any app. So if you want to record your email or any other app, it'll work. But you have to have the app loaded in front like I do with the Solitaire game here. So you could say, well, just set this the way you want, basically. Show the timer when recording, maximum length, show tips when I start a game, and open game bar. Okay, so... That's kind of a neat thing you can use there. You can just, you can record your games or whatever it is you want to record. Now, once you have recorded your game and you want to see them, you go to the game DVR, which is back in here. And then we go down to game DVR. And you'll see any recordings you've made on this PC in here. Okay, so there's the recording we just made. Okay, and a couple other things here. One of the neat things you can do is print to PDF, and it's built right in. You don't need an app to do it now. Okay, so let me just open something like Notepad here. Okay, and then we just go File and Print or Control-P. Now, as usual, it'll bring up any printers that you have on here, but Microsoft Print to PDF. So we say print. Okay, and then we tell it where we want it to save. So we'll just call it test here. Okay, and it's creating a PDF out of it. So now if we go into our documents, here is our PDF file. Okay, and then it asks us what we want to bring it up with. So we can bring it up with Microsoft Edge or pick another tool there. And there Microsoft Edge brought us in the PDF document. 
Okay, now something I wanted to show you in settings, but I didn't get to it is if we go in here now, okay, and here's some notifications. Let's go into all settings. Then let's go into user accounts here. And then sync your settings. Okay, so now when you have another device, say you have two computers, you can send the themes, your web browser settings, your password, language preferences, ease of access, and other Windows settings. You can sync all those together. So whenever you sign on to another computer or device, a tablet for instance, that's with Microsoft, you will be able to sync all of your settings together, which comes in really handy. Let me close this here. And this, and let's just just open Microsoft Edge here for a minute. And it does have some neat features. So this is much better than Internet Explorer ever was. So if you click here, you have your favorites. You have a reading list, so you can add things here to your reading list so that you can read them later. Okay, now let's click over here. And then let's go down to settings. Now, one of these things that I really like about this is you have a light mode and a dark mode. And I quite like the dark mode myself. So you can show a favorites bar. And then down here, how you want to open it with a start page, new tab page, previous pages, and a specific page. Open new tabs with, okay? So top sites, a blank page, top sites. Okay, this is where you clear your browser data. And then your reading view. So you have light, medium, or dark. And then your reading view font size. And then our advanced settings here. So if you want to show the home button, your pop-up blocker. If you're going to use Adobe Flash, you can keep that on or turn it off. Okay, care of browsing, you can select text with your keyboard. And then your privacy settings, so passwords, save form entries, send do not track requests. If you want con if you want Cortana to assist you with the browser your what you want to search with so either Bing or you can add a new one here search suggestions as you type just like in Google it fills it out for you as you type whether you're gonna block cookies okay site save pr protected media page prediction and your screen filter Okay, and then let's uh, go out of here. So now you see that we have our home button up here. And then we have our favorite bar here, but we don't have anything in it yet. And then we have our regular things like our new tab up here that you're used to with other browsers. Okay, now something else that's kind of cool is annotation for pages. So let's go to... Um, Yahoo.com, for instance. Now, let's wait for this to load up. Seems to be here. Okay, now, you see this right here? Click on that, and you can make a web note. Okay, so now you see some tools have appeared up here. Let me put your mouse over them and it shows you what they are. So we have our pen, our highlighter, our eraser, and add a type note, and a clip. So let's just go, let's go with a highlighter here. Let's go down here and highlight some stuff. Let's go to the pen.
So T cool, or whatever that means. Our eraser. Type note. So okay, and then Okay, and then you can garbage it by clicking on the little garbage thing there if you want. Add more notes. Okay, so these are good. You can keep these for yourself. So you save it here. Okay, and that. So you save it in your quick notes here, and now you can you can send it as well. Also, add it, you can add it to your favorites to your reading list, and then down here, you can send it. This be the note. And it's now in OneNote. Okay, so this is a really neat thing that you can do to annotate pages if you want to make notes about a web page, and then share them with somebody as well if you want. Okay, and then just click exit and you're out. Okay, and then you can do standard things like importing your favorites, add to favorites, and sharing over here. Okay, so there's a quick tutorial on Microsoft Edge. Okay, so we've gone over several things now that should help you with getting the most out of Windows 10.